just share the word of God. It is <clears throat> indeed it is a blessing. Amen. It's a blessing to be with you. So good morning again. Praying that the Lord is blessing you. Amen. 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 Well, um, it's funny. I want to share with you that uh, a few weeks ago we were um, talking and the subject matter we were talking about was occupy until he comes. And it's so funny. Uh, the Holy Spirit has been speaking to me throughout the week and throughout the days. <clears throat> I keep hearing the word sojourn. And I, I said, well, I know what it means, but at the same time, let's look up the meaning. And um, the Spirit of the Lord was really, again, ministering to my heart. And just, I want to just talk to us about some different things uh, from that, that subject matter, uh, talking about sojourn. Really because what was happened, if I can say it like this, the Lord was showing me where the lines have been blurred. The lines have been blurred. Uh, so that you understand what I mean, the lines have been blurred. We've gotten to the place that what we were supposed to be looking at, what we were supposed to be doing, we've kind of got lost in the midst of different things. Some things have become so uh, much a priority that we've kind of forgotten our purpose. Mm -hmm. We've forgotten what we're supposed to do. Let me, let me just kind of get here and that kind of goes slow and it's fast at the same time, you know? Um, I told you, uh, talk about sojourner, uh, the word means a stranger or foreigners. Uh, means uh, somebody that's, that, if you will, they are, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, that's somebody that's dwelling alongside a place or to be passing through or passing by. Um, really, if we kind of get the right kind of picture, uh, the picture of a Christian would be the picture of a pilgrim or a stranger who's only dwelling or living in a place, but yet they're really passing through. You know, they're going through a foreign country or a foreign place. And it's only for a brief time. So really, uh, for us to understand the believer here on earth, this is not our home. Amen. We're just passing through. And so that's really kind of the concept we kind of, kind of want to get to and <coughs> talk about. Uh, this is not our permanent dwelling site. This is not the place where we're going to be staying. And so there are some things that we, without realizing, have gotten comfortable in. Kind of lost sight of what God really wants. Mm -hmm. That's where we're talking about the lines being blurred. But let me go a different way with you. You know, uh, some years ago, um, we had uh, someone come to stay at the home. They were supposed to be coming to visit for a week. They were from out of state. And, you know, we were excited when they came uh, that week. And during the course of the week, we had different things planned. Um, at the end of the week, for whatever reason it, it was, they didn't leave. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and uh, that week turned into two weeks. And consequently, it turned into three. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in our home, it was like, oh, wait a minute, we, 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 we got a, somebody that's, that's here that they're visiting, mm -hmm. but it seems like they've been trying to take up permanent residence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so the lines have been blurred. You know, like we're, we're talking inside now. You don't want to offend the visitor. And I said, but you're still wondering, when are they leaving? Mm -hmm. right. You know, they're here, but we know they got to go. That's right. Amen. And so consequently, there is a sense that, that we're going to have a, have, have a real conversation. Right. You know, in our conversation, you know, we, we found out some things that happened. And so, uh, but our visitor for the week that was supposed to be for a week, it turned into a month. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And, then, and then they moved on to somebody else before they got back to where they were going. My point is, is that in the process, they were just supposed to be in a place that they were just going to be with us mm -hmm. for a moment. That's right. And they couldn't. They weren't supposed to come in and supposed to set up as though they were staying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of us have begun to put things together here in the earth realm like this is our home. Mm -hmm. We've forgotten that as sojourners, if you will, we're travelers through. We're supposed to be establishing kingdom rules here on earth. <laughs> Amen. 
Well, let me let me just just back up, if you will. I want to read some scriptures to us, and I won't hold you real long, but it's this fact that just understanding. Are you in that place that you yourself can recognize that the lines have been blurred? What's your focus? What's become so important that you've gotten to the place that you've lost sight of what God really wants of you? So let's look at 1 Peter. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verses 13 through 17. Amen? Amen. Amen. It says, Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Now, 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 let me take my time. When he said, gird up the loins of your mind, you know, there's another way we could say it that we would understand. When he said, gird up the loins, back in that day, because of what they wore, basically to, to, to be prepared for battle or prepared to do something, you had to take that garment and take it and wrap it a certain way and tie it in a way so that it was fashioned now more in a way that it was no longer in the way. Um, but let's say, see it in a way that we can understand. The Bible's telling us to prepare our minds for action. Well, gird up your loins or, or prepare your minds for action. Well, what is God looking for? He's looking for us to take action, but action in terms of what does the Holy Ghost want from us now? What is he calling us to do right now? He said, then he says, be sober. Now, now, when we say that word sober, one of the words sober comes in is to have self-control. Well, when you talk about be sober, the, the mindset really it came from a place where they were talking about for a person not to be in a place where they're intoxicated, where they were out of their mind. Well, what God is really calling for us is to take action, to be in a place where we have sound mind, sound judgment. Amen. Where we can be able to be in a place properly, mm -hmm. how would you say it, properly being able to use ourselves in such a way, mentally, emotionally, that we're thinking in such a way. Then it goes, he says, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So he's talking about, so we can have this sense of, of pure thought to this place where we come in this, this line that we're looking for this time when Christ is coming back, that revelation of Christ coming forth. But yet our hope fully in him that even now that we're preparing for the return of Christ. Well, well, how do we, we prepare? It's, it's really focusing even to the sense of understanding that while we're here, we have a specific thing we're called to do, but let's not lose sight of it. I hope I'm in the right place. And then he says, he tells us, you've been called, let's, let's call it, I'm going to say it, called what we're called from, and then what we're called to. Because as we're in this place, it's like, again, I say the lines have been blurred to the point that, that we're supposed to be leading people to a place where they have broken relationship and broken fellowship. We're called to be ministers, ministers of reconciliation. But we've lost the sense of direction, our compass has Amen. somehow caused us to navigate a different type of, type of way, a different place. We're going in a different direction. We've come to the place that some things are more important. We prioritize things in a whole nother way. And it's like, it's, it's like we've forgotten that this is not where we're supposed to just, just go ahead and make camp and say, this is where, this is it. This is not the land that we're supposed to be settling in. We're passing through, but there's something we're supposed to be doing, but it's not about us. Amen. Amen. And I believe, again, the lines have been blurred. And so we've forgotten that Christ has us, I say us, till Christ has you on a mission. Mm -hmm. And you've forgotten your assignment. And I hope this makes sense to you. Because we're in this place it's like we're supposed to be doing some things, but again, the line has been blurred. I no longer see what I've been called for. I found that certain things can get us to the place that it becomes more important than whatever it was that God ever wanted. Wow. Let me say it like this. I don't know about you, 
but just the daily routine, our daily routine, sometimes we can neglect the things of God. We can get caught up in what we just normally do so that the lines are blurred. We're so, the sense of just trying to feed our families, take care of home, we can get lost in the sense that this is what everything's about. Let's get back on point. In verse 14, he says, As obedient children, mm -hmm. not fashioning yourselves according to the former laws in your ignorance. What God was saying to us, in essence, he didn't want us to conform to the, to the old evil desires that we had before we came into the revelation of knowing Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. He didn't want us walking in a place, and he used the word ignorance, mm -hmm. and ignorance is really that place of not knowing. That's right. We've come into a place of revelation mm -hmm. that God has brought forth an understanding now of what we're called to do, who we really are, and what we're supposed to be touching bases with others. Amen. Thank you. And, and I, I, now, at the same time, I don't want you to lose sight of this. It doesn't mean that the only thing that God wants, he doesn't want you to be involved socially, economically. That's not what I'm saying. You know, that's why you also got the other point. We still have certain things that we're supposed to do until it comes. We don't just sit back twiddling our thumbs. It's like we have a work that we're supposed to be doing, but we've lost sight of the true work. Right. Amen. Amen. What's become more important? What, what's become more important than what Christ really desires of you? We're fighting over things that God didn't want us to fight over. We're upset and bothered over things that God never intended for us to be concerned about. Well, we're concerned in this sense, that we should have peace in the midst of this place. I know some people are going to think, man, you've lost your mind. But I, if I say it like this, I guess I lost it a long time ago. I was looking, and I'm trying to stay on course, but you know, even I was looking at some things, and I began to wonder to myself, after all the things that I've done since accepting Christ as my personal Savior, there were times I looked back and I said, you know what? When my son was playing baseball, um, when he was in a playoff game, or when he was playing football, and these things were happening, there were times I could have been at his game, but it was for me, what God had given for me to do was to share the word of God. Amen. I had to miss certain things. I remember getting the word how he hit a home run in his, in their sense of their little league game mm -hmm. playoffs. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the question in my mind, man, should I have just forsaken Bible study, and gone to the game. I wondered about those things. Even the other day, it crossed my mind. And the Lord reminded me, he says, Son, you were in the right place mm -hmm. at the right time sure. doing the thing that I called. That's right. He said, you still got the information. Your son still knows that you love him. He still knows you're on his team. You're mm -hmm. probably his biggest fan. Well, that's not the issue. The issue was, in that moment of time, I was wondering, was it all worthwhile? Was this, should I, could I, should I do, be doing something else? He reminded me, you're just a sojourner. Mm -hmm. You're traveling through this place. There are things that specifically I want you to do. Sure. You haven't missed what I desired of you. Mm -hmm. He said, but you got to get your priorities in order. Wow. Sometimes we get to the place, we're thinking, I want to tell you, some of you want certain things. And I'm not telling you God's not going to bless you with those things. That's not what he's saying. He just wants you in a place that you don't lose sight of him. Amen. More than the sense of seeing those things. And I, folks, we got to get to this place. Amen. These lines have been blurred. Mm -hmm. You know what you're looking at? How you say it? It's here for a moment, going to be gone soon. I hope I'm making mm -hmm. sense. Because it's really one of these oh, things yes. God really wants us to get. Yes, Daddy right. really wants us to obtain an mm -hmm. understanding a revelation, mm -hmm. a revelation that you're here for a purpose. Right. There may be somebody that's sitting close to you, maybe a neighbor that's nearby that needs to hear the word, and yeah. God has chosen you to mm -hmm. share the word. Right. But if the lines are blurred, if the lines are obscured, if you've forgotten what you're here for, 
that recording may be lost mm -hmm. because you're not doing what you're called. Amen. That, just, just, just understand it. Mm -hmm. So he says, let's, let's not get into the place that we fall back into what we were and how we were right. before we accepted Jesus as mm -hmm. our personal Savior. Amen. And I don't know about you, Amen. but you know, we like to all like to think that we were good persons or good people. But the Bible kind of takes that into, how you say, takes that into the place. He puts all those little thoughts that we have in the pot. And he says, for all have such sin, so I don't care how good you are, you still have sin. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, for all have sin and come short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Now, in case you didn't know it, so you get this in, in perspective, because sometimes we just say, hey, I'm just a good person. I'm just trying to do good. It's more than just doing good. Mm -hmm. It's going to require more than just doing good. You're going to have to, at some point, give your life to Christ. If you haven't, that's something you're going to have to do. Well, why do you bring that in? Because it's important that we don't understand, or that we understand, so the lines don't be obscured and blurred anymore. We don't want to erase the things that God has. Amen. So it's like this. It's like this. I don't care how good you are, you know, how nice a person you are, how good you are to your fellow man. If you're not walking in the love of God, and you can only walk in that if you accept Christ as your personal Savior. If you're not walking in that place, then we're still missing everything we're trying to attain. Amen. <sighs> Moving on. And so we can't fall back into this old place, the old mindset. There's some things I used to do. Glory to God. Man, I, I, I thank God. That he's changed my mindset, the place that I was at, the things that I did. You know, I, I'm glad that he's moved me. And I want to tell you, I haven't reached a state of perfection. I sure want to get there, but I haven't reached that state of perfection, but I can't use that as an excuse. I'm just saying, I don't want to walk in ignorance since he brought revelation. Amen. Ignorance was the place where it says, I just didn't know. Mm -hmm. Well, what you do know now, I want to tell you. If you're a child of the king, if you're a child of the king, you do know yes. God's called you. And I want to call it to a higher standard than anybody else. Amen. Amen. And with Amen. that standard, you're going to have to come up, not to the way you think. Your opinion matters to some, but it doesn't matter to God. Amen. Amen. So we got to put aside those things that we have felt so compelled to do. And to say, to come in alignment with the Spirit of God. Now, somebody going to be upset with this. It's going to bother some people. You can be okay. Let me tell you like this. You can be mad at me. My shoulders are big. They're broad. But Christ is bigger than all of us. He can handle it. And so I'm, if you come to me, I'll go to him. If I'm wrong, I don't mind. But I'm telling you, what he showed me is that the lines have been obscured, <coughs> Amen. and we got to get back to what God called us. Amen. There's a world that's looking for something, and what they're looking for is Christ, and the only way they're going to see him is through you and me. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. We can't fall back into the old place of ignorance. We can't walk like everybody else. We can't do what everybody else is doing. Right. We can't say the same things as the world. Right. Amen. Find your place. Mm -hmm. Find him. Someone's going to tell me, no, that's not it. That's not it. Well, I want to tell you, he shook me up. And so he says, you're called from that place. You're called from this old place. He says, as obedient children, not fashion yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. He says, you're called out of that. Mm -hmm. That's not the place you get to walk anymore. Right. So what am I called to? He says, you're called to this place, but as he which has called you is holy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're called to, as the one that called you is holy, so you be holy in all manner of conversation. When he says all manner of conversation, he says in everything you do in your life, let the holiness of God show forth. Amen. Let the pureness of God come forth. God wants to be seen in everything we say and everything we do. Someone was not supposed to see you, but see Christ, the living Savior, in and through your Amen. life. Amen. And then he says, because it's written. That's why I said, why do I do it like that? Because it's written, 
Be ye holy, mm -hmm. for I am. Man, I love it when Jesus yes. says, I am. Mm -hmm. I love it when we hear the God, the Godhead says, I am. Mm -hmm. You don't remember back when that when, when Moses was in that place, and Moses right. said, Who's go, who should I say sent me? Mm -hmm. I gotta go to Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Who should I say sent me? He said, Tell him I am that I am. So when I am speaks, he said, Be ye holy as I am holy. That's Glory right. to God. Mm -hmm. So we got to get to this place that we recognize the God that we serve is holy. Amen. He's Amen. perfected. Mm -hmm. He is perfect. He wants to find maturity in you or bring it forth in you. Slow down, Ken. <laughs> so look at this. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of persons, this is what you understand. God doesn't have respect of anybody that calls on him, no matter how they call out. He doesn't respect them individually. In that regard, he doesn't respect persons because of your title, your status. He doesn't respect that. Mm -hmm. But he looks at every man's work. Oh, yes. So what he's telling us now is that you got to look at the sense of this time that you have in the earth realm, mm -hmm. what you're doing in the earth realm. He said, because I called you mm -hmm. just to understand you're passing through. Yes. You're passing by. Mm -hmm. This is not your home. That's right. But I have something specific that you're supposed to do. Now, if the lines have been blurred, folks, let me tell you like this. If you were listening in the beginning, when we had that individual come and stay with us, I want to tell you, when you get to the place that you start setting up camp like you just hear, then everything gets obscured mm -hmm. because the only thing that matters is that which is around you. Because you're setting up like you're going to live here forever. Mm -hmm. We put up all kinds of signs and let people know, hey, this is the place. You know, you got to do, you, you got to look at it like this. Because this is, stay off my grass, keep out, mm -hmm. you know, no trespassing. Well, I'll tell you something. Those things are good. You know, when you understand, you're going to be here forever. This is my place. That's not what God's calling you to, guys. Mm -hmm. You're not here. You're passing through. That's right. If anything, you're the trespasser. <laughs> this is not the place where you get to dwell. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not telling you that God doesn't want to bless you. He does not want to, want to bring forth some things for you in this place. But you still got to understand, this is not your home. Can you, can you imagine we're called to this place that heaven is supposed to be seen here on earth. Amen. Now, now, wait, 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 wait. Understand what Absolutely. I'm saying. God wants you to understand mm -hmm. that how heaven operates, Amen. he wants that government to be established Amen. in Amen. the earth realm. Amen. Man, that's crazy. That's wild. That's deep. There's some things that are supposed to happen. You know, when I think about that, I see Jesus doing things that were unconventional. I see Jesus walking on water. That's right. How did Jesus walk on water? Someone said, well, he was God. Well, he was called to operate the way the heavens does. He wasn't operating the way the earth realm works. God's calling us to operate here in this earth realm the way heaven operates. Amen. Amen. That means how we deal with people. Do you know God wants to fill you with love one for another? God wants us to express a love that we have not shown it means in the course of showing love, it means, hey, you're going to have opinions that are different from mine. Amen. I'm called to a place now where the Spirit of God is showing me i got to love people where they're at. Right. Even as Bible-toting, Bible-believing people, mm -hmm. we have been browbeating people with the Word. That's Amen. not what God's calling us. We've got to be mindful now oh, yeah. to understand that we are sojourners mm -hmm. passing through, right. and somebody's looking for Christ. Amen. And the only way they're going to see Christ is through you. Amen. 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 Well, Amen. I don't know if this makes sense today, but changes, tell somebody changes have to be made. And I'm looking for changes, yet as we look for changes, one of the changes that really has to start has to start with me. i got to recognize the lines that I've obscured, the lines that I've erased, the lines that I have created that are different from the lines of God. Amen. Amen. Oh, God. I don't know about you. Oh, glory to God. I don't know about you, but I know the Holy Spirit's calling us. And I want to call it like this. I'm reminded at the beginning of this year, just before the beginning and into this year, 
The Holy Spirit was calling us. He says, I'm calling you to uncharted territory. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm telling you, Amen. the Lord wants to navigate some new places for us. Amen. Some places you and I have never experienced. Mm -hmm. God wants to show us how to navigate these right. places that we can't do ourselves. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you, if nothing else, I'm learning I need to put a guard on my mouth. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, Amen. but there's some things I've been saying, been saying for a long. I'm opinionated. Glory to God. Can I be honest? I'm a person who has a lot of opinions. Even if I don't express them, I have a lot of opinions. Mm -hmm. There's times the Holy Spirit has to tell me, be still. Oh, yeah. But I'm like this. Well, Lord, just let me just say this. Mm -hmm. God does not want my opinions. Mm -hmm. Amen. He just wants me to be able to share. Mm -hmm. What reflects him. Amen. Amen. There's somebody that needs to hear a word today. There's somebody that needs to hear and see Christ. Amen. I'm appealing to you today. I'm appealing to you, my brothers and sisters of Christ, that you go back. If nothing else, pray for me because I need your prayers. You know, you, you can see my faults and my flaws and my imperfections. But, but I want you to pray for me. But I, I, I want us in a place we can begin to pray for one another. Pray for what God really desires Amen. for all of us. Pray for what God desires in this world. Amen. Don't let the enemy cause us to be blind, to mm -hmm. walk in a place of ignorance, mm -hmm. to walk in the old place, in the evil way, as the Bible calls it, but for us to walk in a way where the Spirit of God can Amen. show us that Amen. in all matter of our conversations, in every way that we live, out this place that someone could see who you are in Christ. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Tell somebody, I'm just a soldier. I'm just walking through this place. This is not my home. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's, it's the last thing I want to say to you today. I want to shut up, if you will. I pray you can marinate this word. I pray that 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 we gave you something of substance, something to think about. Because I believe the Holy Ghost wants to minister to our hearts and to our minds. And I, I want to tell you again, you know, the funny thing was last night, um, I, I went to, you know, was ready to go to bed about 1 o'clock this morning, you ready to go to bed. And um, I actually went to the bed, and the Lord told me to get back up to pray. And now, it was funny because what he wanted me to pray for was really something, it didn't have anything to do with this, was just something he had been showing me. Something he's like, you know, son, I want you to know that I want to give you some things. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, this can't be God because that's materialistic. Why should we even be considering materialistic? Well, God wants to bless us in ways that we not even imagine. It's not, not about the material thing. It was just a sense that he says, you know what? Many of you have gotten to the place. A lot of you have been fighting. You've been fighting for a long time. And when I call it fighting, you've been going for it. And in the midst of going through, many of you have gotten, gotten tired. You've gotten mm -hmm. to the place where you just, can I use the word burn out? Just, just feel like, hey, nothing's mm -hmm. coming. God says, I, I still want to bless you in those areas Amen. that you can walk through, that you can see the glory of God in oh, different okay. ways. He says, there's different things that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And so he taught, called me to a place. It wasn't really to pray, but he wanted me to go and look at something. And I'm like, and I was fighting with God because that didn't make sense to me. Like, why look at that? Why have this vision for some things? But you're telling I'm surgery. He says, hey, son, I just want you to know that even in the smallest detail of your life, I've got it covered. Thank you, Lord. I'm concerned about everything aspect of your life. You know, God says, you, cast your care upon me because I care for you. He's concerned about it. Some of you are fighting because you feel like your financial picture. Yeah, I understand. We're just here for a moment. But even yet, if someone's saying, well, I still got to live. God wants to bless you, even in the smallest details of your life. But he wants to do it in such a way that he can get the glory. Are you willing to trust God? Are you willing to move in a different Amen. place? You know, your children sometimes can take such a priority. You know, in so many things, children put such a demand on their lives. But the Lord says, you know, that you would understand, in truth, he's just giving you those children in a place that you're the steward over their lives. Amen. You, you were called. You were called Amen. to that place. He wants to use you to put things into them, for in their passing through, they too have something greater that God's calling to. Listen, folks, God wants to bless you 
in every aspect of your life. Amen. He wants to do things that you and I could not even imagine. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to lose sight. I don't want the lines to be obscured. I don't want you to somehow miss what God has. It's greater than what you think. It's greater than you know. God wants more for you than what you've ever wanted for yourself. You, but I need you, I need you to reach into a new place. Oh, I'm telling you, God wants you to come into a new place, Amen. a new place, mm -hmm. a place you haven't been, a right. deeper revelation of understanding mm -hmm. he wants to give. I'm telling you, if you will embark in this place, if you're willing to surrender, if you're willing to let go, God wants to show you the lines again. <laughs> the lines have been obscured. Even in your prayer life, even in your relationship, God says, I don't want those lines obscured between you and me anymore. God wants a different relationship than what you had last minute, last month, last year. The lines were obscured. And because the lines were obscured, it made some of us so we didn't even want to come. We didn't feel like anything was happening. But I need you to know, that what you're doing counts. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God loves you. Oh, yes. He loves you. He wants more from you mm -hmm. than what you could ever imagine. He wants to get more to you than what you could ever believe. Listen, I want to tell you, the word works if you're willing to work the word. Amen. The word works if you will work the word. And listen, let's pray. If you don't mind, let's pray together. If this word has touched a place in your heart, if it's spoken to you where you're at, then I want to tell you, I want those lines to no longer be obscured. If you'll pray with me, just reach out with your hand as though you're touching it. Father, I'm thanking you in advance for what you're going to do. I thank you yet for what you're doing even now. I thank you, Father, that you're speaking into people's health right now and you're calling for divine healing you, in their emotions mm -hmm. in their thought process you, the place where they've been set I thank you Lord that yes. you're resetting yes. Yes. how they think and how they see yes. I thank you Lord that our opinions are changing thank to mold Lord. or to look like you yes. Father I thank you that we're settling in a new place Father I thank you that not only them they mm -hmm. but me yes. I am changing yes. because of your word. Father, I thank you thank for a true Lord. spirit of love, a true spirit of unity, mm -hmm. a true spirit to walk in a new place in a new way. Yes. Father, we mean, we're yielded to you right now. And Father, I pray that every place where we've been sick, and I'm going to call sickness, mm -hmm. stress, disease, mm -hmm. everything that has oh, not Lord. been in alignment with the spirit of God Amen. in our oh, mental Lord emotional mm -hmm. and spiritual walk i thank you for a change yes. now jesus in jesus name. name jesus name not not just a change but a divine change mm -hmm. in jesus name thank you, lord. i thank you lord for a new appointment mm -hmm. a new appointment yes. a new time thank a new lord. season i thank you for change this hours in jesus name thank tell you, somebody lord. it's mine now it's tell mine somebody it's done now. in it's jesus name jesus i receive it Right now, my healing, my deliverance, I thank you, Lord, that you're bringing forth the place that I prosper in right now. In Jesus' name. Again, I tell you, the word works if we work the word. Amen. Be blessed. You know, I have three ways that you can go. You can go to our website at agapecommunityfellowship.com. Go to the bottom and click on the Givelify link. That's one way. Way number two is to give through Zelle. To give through Zelle, just go to your bank account, click on the Zelle uh, icon. The email address for that is agapeint for us at yahoo.com. The third way to pay is go to the P.O. Box 1222, Pomona, California, 91767. Thank you.